Spiritual Teaching 242 Love Each Other 1. At this time when humanity's pain is bitter and its journey is painful, it has been my will to approach you to help you find your inheritance. 2. Turn your face and see the path that you left, of which some today are horrified. I will make you return to those same roads, but not so that you can get dirty there, but so that you can rescue those who are lost. 3. Make the most of my stay among you, disciples, so that you may carry my peace in your spirit and also carry to his brothers. 4. My doctrine in this third era will lift you from your spiritual stagnation and will make you take great and firm steps on the spiritual path. 5. I granted you the grace that my communication was by your own understanding, so that you feel worthy of my divinity, so that, seeing that you were able to transmit my word and that great crowds tomorrow, when this voice is no longer heard, do not lose heart before the fight knowing that my word was engraved in your spirit. 6. You will take care of the seed that I am entrusting you, see that I never disinherit the son, but he, with his evil deeds, is disinheriting. 7. When men knock on your door for explanations and testimonies, do not hide or go ask, what will I do? What will I answer? 8. You will be the ones who speak of me with a calm spirit and firm voice and defend my name with the weapons that I have given you, which are charity, love, and truth. 9. That is why I have remained among you manifesting myself for a long time, so that my many lessons enlighten you and my wonders ignite your faith. The essence of my word has made you forget your old religious fanaticism and when you are searched out, they will only find in you the simplicity of true spiritual worship. 10. My word overflows in torrents in the different places where it makes itself heard, so that in times of greater struggle and trials, do not go to feel lacking in teaching, but the moment is approaching when my word stops in this way. 11. Do not be afraid to run out of this grace. Think that since the first time, I have been preparing you for the communication of spirit to spirit. 12. Each time has been a new lesson for your spirit and a step forward on the path of evolution. 13. I am giving my message of peace to the world, making my voice heard through many spokespersons. And as in all times, my teaching tends to perfect your spirit. 14. If man lacked spirit and was an absolutely material being, his mission and destiny would end with his last breath of life. But there is something in him that is imperishable, for which he will fight, watch over and raise his gaze to the eternal. 15. My word prepares you to live in the world of tomorrow, in that time in which my life will begin to be understood. Be watchful, then you will see that I knew how to anticipate events which I predicted long before. 16. My doctrine will fight and fight real battles in the hearts of men, as long as they insist on living a selfish existence, making them understand that where there is no charity and love, there can be no peace. 17. My spiritual lessons are not only for those who live oppressed in poverty and humiliation. They have also the mission of channeling the spirits and minds of those who lead and govern in the different orders to humanity. My word is calling on noble feelings that houses all human, because it is the way you will understand a superior destiny that is in each one of you. 18. If instead of keeping hatred, selfishness and pessimism in their hearts, men harbored the desire to do good and nourish hope in the triumph of justice, spirituality would spread and you would love each other as brothers, forming a powerful force before which all situations that lead to war would vanish. 19. I do not punish you, but I am justice and as such, I make it felt in anyone who contravenes my mandates, because the Eternal has made you know his law that no one can modify. 20. See how the man in the middle of the trial, falling into an immense abyss, seeing that the woman cries at the loss of loved ones, children deprived of food and homes mired in misery and mourning, cries, is dismayed at her misfortune. She despairs and instead of praying and repenting of her faults, she denies against me, saying, how is it possible that God punish me in this way, while the Divine Spirit in truth also cries for the pain of His children and their tears are the blood of love, of forgiveness and of life? 21. Truly I tell you that at this time, due to the evolution that humanity has reached, 
It does not depend only on my charity the remedy for your situation. She is a victim of herself, but not of my punishment, because my law and my light shine in all awareness. My justice descends to uproot all noxious grass, and the very forces of nature are manifested as interpreters of that justice. So, it seems that everything comes together to exterminate man, when it is only for his purification, but there will be those who get confused and say, if we have to suffer so much pain, why do we come to this world without reflecting that pain? And sin were not born of me. Man is responsible for remaining in ignorance of what is justice and what is expiation. Hence first his disagreement and then his blasphemy. Only he who has observed my teaching and is attentive to my law is incapable of bringing charges against his father. 22. The spirit is a spark sprouted from the divine spirit and put to the test through different subjects. For that evolution that you have already reached, it is possible that at this time my spiritual message will reach him directly and be understood. If everything is perfected, it is natural that you also evolve. How is it possible that you still imagined your God in the limited way in which your ancestors conceived him? You will no longer be able to live and think like those who acted in accordance with the rites and precepts that they were forced to follow. You can no longer consider yourselves like them, too young to face what is spiritual. Twenty-three. If before men tried to find their salvation by building material temples and tried to achieve purification of your spirit in the practice of external worship, you will not remain in that stagnation of fanaticism and ignorance, because the faculties that you possess to understand and contemplate the greatness of your God would be lethargic in your being. 24. I have told you, concentrate in the depth of your heart so that you contemplate, not with the eyes of matter but with those of the spirit, the infinite and unfathomable. Then, in the face of so much grace received from my charity, you will not pretend to show your gratitude with material offerings. 25. Your feelings and works of love will constitute your best and most worthy offering. 26. If you want to achieve glory, make a book written with your good works, then you will be the only ones responsible of yourselves and you will no longer relegate your responsibility to other people. 27. After having pointed out the path that is the same that I traced for you from the past and that is a firm foundation for your future, you must guard against constituting new laws or precepts that could appear as new doctrines, for they will depart from the meaning of my word. 28. I do not come to attack any religion, each one of them has its responsibility. I only show the perfect, the one to improve yourself to follow me. 29. I shed my blood to teach you to conquer salvation. The time is approaching when you too, in the hour of trial, recognize how just were the words of Jesus. 30. My light is manifested in the consciousness of the multitudes gathered under the shadow of these humble and small enclosures, which are a tree for the weary traveler and an oasis for the desert pilgrims. She illuminates and comforts them. 31. In the love with which I forgive and correct you, I make myself known. When you lived under your will, offending each instant to the Father, I did not cut the thread of that existence of sin. I did not deny you air or bread. I did not abandon you in pain or ignored your complaint, and nature continued to surround you with his wonders, his light and his blessings. This is how I make myself known and I manifest myself to men. No one will be able to love you on earth with this love and no one will know how to forgive you with the forgiveness that I give you. 32. Your spirit is a seed that I have been cultivating and perfecting from eternity, until it gives the most beautiful flowers and the most perfect fruits. How could I let you die or abandon you to the fury of the storms? 33. How can I let you abandon yourselves on your way, if the only one who knows the destiny of all creatures is I? 34. I am revealing much to you, so that on your way you learn to listen to the complaint that does not come from the lips, to discover the sadness behind a smile, and to heal illnesses that have no relief through science. 35. Now that the needy are crossing your path, deposit in them some of what you have received, but not to waste your time and be surprised by the clock of eternity calling you to the spiritual valley, because you will bitterly regret the lost opportunity. 36. Work from now on, P. 
Peace for the Spirit. 37. Disciples, my word has many times been righteous among you, but deep down you have found the flavor sweet of the fruit that has raised you to regeneration in this time. 38. I have rigorously claimed you when you have been obstinate in sin, but you have not been slow to discover my Father's intention, which is to save you, and so, the reluctance of matter has been giving way to spirituality. 39. Of the love with which I have given you life, few proofs or signs men give. Of all human affections, the one the most similar to divine love is maternal love, because in it there is selflessness, self-denial and the ideal of making the happiness of the son even at the cost of sacrifice. 40. But love will sprout again from hearts, which will transform the world. This love is inspired by my Holy Spirit, who sends his ray on humanity, to awaken it from its deep sleep, so that it can enjoy the clarity of this new dawn. 41. Anyone who wants to follow me at this time will have to abandon something to go after my footprint. Some will leave possessions, others will forget false loves. There will be those who descend from their high seats and thrones, while others will abandon their altars. 42. Behind will be the passions, vanities, fleeting and insane pleasures. 43. It is that I come in search of your spirit, whom I help with my love to save him. I have not opened the doors of the promised land for your flesh to penetrate. That white city is the abode that awaits the bride dressed in her best clothes the arrival of the fiancé, who has conquered her with her merits and her victories in the great battles of life, and that is your spirit. 44. I come to teach you to do the necessary merits to reach the eternal abode. I have taught you to pray for the world with that deep and simple prayer that rises to my spirit like the nectar of flowers. I have given you powers and gifts so that you do charity in many ways. I have clothed you with spiritual and moral strength to live and go through trials with a serene spirit. I have stimulated you in your purposes of regeneration and amendment, so that you feel the joy to call you my disciples and the satisfaction of sowing my doctrine with examples. 45. Your spirit has prepared to receive my presence. I see that as time passes, it stops concern for yourself with terrestrial life and your spiritual future begins to interest you more. 46. The sufferings and vicissitudes that you are encountering on your path, you take them as small rocks that only they slightly wound your plant and not as a decisive obstacle to stop your march. Now you save the sob and the tears for the great trials. 47. My charity is leading you and you are understanding. You are no longer those who specified to recreate yourself while you listen to my word without keeping anything from it and you were only attentive to requesting material goods from the Lord. 48. Now you come as true disciples in search of the Master and as such you find me. If before I told you, I am the path, now I can tell you, I am the scale by which you will ascend to me, because you have already found in my light the way to rise up, to approach and to converse spiritually with the Master through prayer. 49. You are finding me within yourselves, in the abode where I have always lived since you existed. You have looked within yourself, and you have discovered a shrine, which keeps an altar of love, an offering of humility and a lamp, whose flame does not extinguish the most violent storms. Faith. 50. Your spirit has been an emissary and bearer of spiritual missions. Since the beginning of time it has been destined to save and bless their kind. 51. For him, the time passed in which he created the image of his God to feel him accessible and close, to touch him, look at him and talk to him. 52. You have long turned your back on those images, figures and symbols, because you have understood that the real image of the Creator you carry in you. Since you possess something of each of the powers and attributes of divinity, such as life, love, consciousness, will, reason, strength, spiritual eternity. 53. At this time I will be understood and loved by your spirit, also I will be imitated. My light is revealing everything that was confusing and incomprehensible to men. 54. I have come to speak to you through your understanding, translating the light of my divine wisdom into human words, 
But know that when the spokesman and the multitude of listeners have known how to prepare to receive me, I have manifested myself in divine essence. But when my children have not known how to elevate themselves, nor have they arranged the sanctuary for my spirit, the divine ray has remained floating above the spirits without fully penetrating them. 55. I will still reveal much to you and teach you in these last moments. My legacy will be great, it still exists in my arcane much of what corresponds to each. Not all of you will reach the same degree of understanding, even being of the number of those indicated because some are on higher steps than others. Understanding this, do not try to force anyone, be kind and condescending and help each other in your mission. 56. You are strengthening yourselves for trials, which will come in unforeseen ways. An indication of what they are to be, what you have had under symbolic forms through prophetic dreams and spiritual insights. Watch and pray that I will prevent you. 57. You feel unworthy and small before my work and before your own destiny. But in truth I tell you that all roughness of your imperfections will be polished by the chisel of those tests that I announce to you. 58. Everything will speak of me and I will be speaking to you through all the manifestations of this nature. The voices that before they were not heard, today they will be heard and understood. All creation will beat, tremble, and shake to bear witness that the divine judgment is in the universe. And after being judged, beings will return to their course, but having taken a step towards perfection. It will be the awakening and rebirth of this humanity. 59. The light of virtue will be able to shine in this world without being extinguished by anyone. Reason will prevail and love will cease to be a word to become work. Lords and slaves will begin to disappear. I will have my disciples all over the earth and they will be light, peace and revelation for the peoples. 60. This world, converted by ambition and human selfishness, into a bone of contention, will at last be shared by all even without being their owners, because by calling yourselves the owner of everything created, you will obediently leave all your goods. 61. Humanity is preparing for when those times of light come. You, when you sit in the middle of the trial, do not go to despair or less to blaspheme. Pray, watch and resist. Blasphemy, denial and imprecations against my justice will start from the mouth of the ignorant, whom you will forgive and teach to rise. When silence falls in the midst of men's despair, you will speak and you will be heard. Then you will see how those who have distanced themselves from me so much and offended me, by their repentance will be forgiven like the prodigal son in the parable. But then you will not be surprised to see that instead of punishment, on them was forgiveness and caress. Before you will cry with joy as you contemplate the feast of peace and love in the world. 62. When the temple of the Holy Spirit rises to infinity from the heart of humanity, there in its bosom, the new revelations that will be greater when spirits rise higher. 63. Now, I long to unite all those who listen to me in the different venues. You are not united because you have not understood, when that is, you will love each other, and by loving each other you will be beating as one heart. 64. The lack of understanding is due to the fact that your analysis is superficial and weak, and you are always worried about the goods of the earth. You settle for the first thing that comes to you that is a bit of tranquility in the heart, a roof shore, a little body health, the warmth of yours and a handful of coins. 65. I am not saying that you despise the goods of the earth, but neither that you prefer the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 66. Seek in my path the elevation of your spirit, but flee from the flattery and earthly honors. Know that names will not stand out among you, but the works of the people as a whole. The memory of the one who sowed good seed, it will be respected, blessed, and its example imitated. That will be your only monument on earth. My peace be with you.